I'm going to report about uh, the achievements of uh, space research, 25 years of space research, and its uh, application to the more distant regions of space. And I will concentrate on its, uh, the change it has produced in plasma physics. I think this is an illustration of what Professor Nagel said, that you should not believe in what is accepted today, because that may very well change very rapidly. First of all, you may ask, is plasma physics of very much importance in astrophysics? If you read the usual textbooks in astrophysics, you don't think this is the case. But in reality, the stars consist of plasmas and the interstellar medium also plasmas. And uh, it seems that uh, the universe consists to 99, more than 99% of plasma. In fact, at least by the volume, more than 99.999999999 percent of, of plasma. So plasma physics should not be considered to be completely irrelevant to uh, the research how the universe is structured. To be more specific, the plasma physics extends from the laboratory. Typically, this is in a logarithmic scale. That is typically one-tenth of a meter for a <coughs> not uh, normal experiment, up to the magnetospheres, the magnetic fields surrounding the Earth and the other planets and the Sun. That is about 10 to the 8 meters. And then co we come up. Uh, <coughs> this is a jump of uh, nine orders of magnitude by another jump by a factor of one billion. You come up to the... <coughs> galactic phenomena, and a third jump, this is a cosmic triple jump, brings you up to the Hubble distance, which is what the uh, Big Bang believers call the size of the, the, the universe. This is 27 orders of magnitude, and laser fusion has extended it downwards to <coughs> by five orders of magnitude more. Uh, it, there are reasons to believe that the basic properties of a plasma is the same in, all the, in the whole region. This is by no means certain. We can trust that it is so in the laboratory and in the magnetospheres, because there we have reliable measurements. The other, <coughs> out to this limit. Outside this, the <coughs> Uh, field is necessarily more speculative because what is called high quality diagnostics, that is an investigation of the properties of a plasma, uh, <coughs> is uh, possible in the laboratory and as far out as the space uh, crafts go, but it is not uh, possible further out. <coughs> Whether we should believe <coughs> except that it, or plasma changes its properties at the outer reach or spacecraft or not. This is a thing which we cannot prove, but I think there are good reasons to suppose so. What has happened in this field during the last uh, years? It is especially that the, magne the space research has made the magnetosphere accessible to uh, detailed analysis <coughs> by uh, high quality instruments, which are sent out here and going <coughs> up and down, up and down, and sending signals to the Earth, which have been interpreted in detail. <coughs> the result of this is, uh, at the same time, laboratory research has made great uh, uh, a great step forward, to some extent <coughs> favored by, to a large extent favored by 
the fusion uh, work which is going on there. So far, the fusion research has not given us any energy, but it has given us very valuable information uh, which can be used for clarifying the structure of the universe. There has also been much work spent in the translation uh, between laboratory work and the magnetosphere. And the result of this is that we have got a drastic change in our concept of what uh, the plasmas out in space are like. In reality, uh, there are <coughs> half a dozen different respects in which uh, this change has uh, taken place. And uh, I'm going to select a few of them to tr and try to, to discuss them more in detail. One of the important things is that our concept of the structure of interplanetary, interstellar, and intergalactic change, uh, space has changed drastically. Fifty years ago, it was generally believed that the <coughs> space between the stars, between the planets, satellites, comets, and so on, was absolutely empty. It is, from that point of view, absolutely empty, but uh, not, not absolutely empty. It is rather empty, but the little matter which is between is very important. 25 years ago, it was real. The attention was drawn to the interstellar, interplanetary matter, and <coughs> uh, this was then considered to be a, a homogeneous nebulous gas with dust in it. Space research has given us a new view, which you can call the space age concept of space, uh, namely that space is highly structurized. It is penetrated by a network of electric currents. And this is something which is of importance in uh, all fields of plasma physics. We know that this is so out of this re uh, limit. There are good reasons to suppose that the whole <coughs> universe is penetrated by, uh, has this, uh, this structure, highly structurized, penetrated by electric currents. More specifically, what does structurized mean? It means that we have discovered uh, a number of phenomena which are strongly inhomogeneous. There are electric double layers, uh, which uh, <coughs> you find everywhere in, uh, in space. These were not believed to exist up to something like five years ago. Now they are very popular. There was quite a few weeks ago a symposium in Denmark where there were 50 of the most prominent people working in this field who discussed the properties of double layers. What is a double layer? If we have an electric current in this direction, then under certain conditions we have a uh, density of the plasma, which is fairly homogeneous. This is the density, and this line uh, gives the electric potential, the voltage, which increases slowly. There is an electric field which drives the current through the plasma. However, when a double layer is, is produced, it, <coughs> the conditions is changed like this. Here is the voltage. It makes a sudden jump and uh, then has another uh, constant value, and the density changes in a corresponding way. <coughs> Such double layers were well known in the laboratory since the time of Langmuir, about 50 years ago. It, it was uh, denied by <coughs> the uh, 
that they could be of any importance in space until they were actually discovered. There are such double layers at uh, a height of something like uh, uh, one or two Earth radii above the Earth. And this is a picture of the Earth, and these are magnetic field lines. And uh, here in the equatorial plane, at a distance of five or six Earth radii, you have a plasma flow, a sunward plasma flow. This is seen from the night side, and that produces an electromotive force here. And this produces electric currents which flow along magnetic field lines to the Earth, then through the ionosphere, and back again to the, uh, to the <coughs> equatorial plane. So we have, we are here uh, discussing an astrophysical problem, not in terms of magnetic fields, as has usually been done, done but to the same extent in, in terms of electric currents, and these electric currents may produce double layers. And here is a double layer at one or two Earth radii, and that means that we have a sudden jump in the voltage there, which produces, uh, <coughs> uh, in which uh, auroras are, auroral electrons are accelerated. Here we have the electromotive force, here the auroral electrons are accelerated, and the energy is transferred by the circuit. This is not a hypothetical, a theoretical hypothetical picture. It is something which uh, is actually measured by uh, spacecrafts, which have penetrated uh, many times. Of course, there are many details which are still uh, obscure. <coughs> These uh, double layers uh, may have uh, voltage differences of kilovolts, which you have here. Solar flares, it is megavolts or gigavolts, and they may be still higher. Then the, uh, the, filament, the currents produce uh, filaments. In cosmical physics, we are accustomed to the Newtonian attraction, the general gravitation, which typically pro produce aims at producing uh, spheres, like stars and planets and so on. However, we have also uh, electromagnetic forces. And these electromagnetic forces, they tend to produce filaments. The basic phenomenon is known for a very long time. It is actually Biot-Savart's law that two parallel currents attract each other. And this produces electric uh, pinches and uh, filamentary structures. And such filamentary structures are common in the universe, can I have the, the slides here? And uh, well, we have good reasons to suppose that whenever you have uh, if observe a filament, that is just an indication that we have electric currents, pinching electric currents there. Can I have the first slide? Yes. This is the sun, this is the solar corona, and if you sharpen the picture a little, you will see that this has thin, thin, thin filaments in every direction. The sun goddess actually has a beautiful hair, which you see here. And these filaments are likely to be due to electric currents, which produce the so-called pinch effect, produce filaments out of it. Next slide. Here is a comet. And here you see striations, filaments of the same kind. Uh, the uh, tail of a comet is obviously you, uh, a plasma phenomenon. This was first point pointed out by Professor Biermann here in Germany. Next slide. Here are photographs of, in of interplan interstellar space far out in the galaxy. You see thin filaments everywhere. Next slide. 
Here are other filaments of the same kind. Next slide. Here is an ordinary cosmic cloud, which seems to be a homogeneous uh, uh, structure. But if you subject it to what is called uh, um, contrast enhancement technology, you get this picture. That is, you, are, you put it into a computer and ask the computer to look for, uh, for contrast. And then you see it is penetrated by filaments, which is a strong indication that uh, filamentary structure, that there are electric currents in uh, also there. And I have one more slide. Here you have dark lanes, which probably are also due to filaments. This is just some arbitrary examples to show you how important the formation of filaments are and what is likely to be uh, due to. <coughs> then comes uh, surface currents in space, which are also very dramatic. It uh, is uh, actually, uh, to me, it was the most important, the most shocking uh, discovery. Namely, that if you go out from uh, the Earth, measure the magnetic field out uh, from the Earth, you observe, this is now the distance from the Earth, this is the magnetic field, you observe that it decreases approximately as R to the minus 3 as it should do, out to something like 7 or 8 Earth radii. Then it may certainly change <coughs> Uh, its sign. And this is made very abruptly in a, in a very, very short distance, uh, some hundred kilometers, less than the distance from here to Paris, for example. And uh, uh, what uh, spacecraft records here is that you have constant value here with some fluctuation, and then suddenly it jumps over in this way. This demonstrates that there is a thin current layer uh, which, uh, <coughs> which separates the Earth's, uh, the plasma controlled by the Earth's magnetic field from the plasma controlled by the solar magnetic field. And such double layers, uh, they are found on many places on the uh, Jupiter, Saturn, and quite a few other places, comets, and so on, we have something like 10 different cases where we have such thin, thin filaments. The, <coughs> and they separate regions which may have different magnetizations. It goes here, like that, and outside, it goes like this. It also, the regions may also have different uh, temperature, different density, different, um, uh, different chemical composition. And if we go out in space further on, it may be that similar layer separates regions of ordinary matter from antimatter, if we extrapolate it. The awkward thing with such uh, layer is that it, you cannot observe it until you penetrate it. I attended the meeting in, uh, uh, in uh, I attended the arrival of the <coughs> space uh, probe to uh, Saturn, and um, then it was dramatic, uh, <coughs> dramatic. No one saw it, and certainly everybody in the big hall saw it. Here it comes. And uh, this makes it awkward. To, uh, because if you go out to the uh, interplanetary, uh, <coughs> to the intergalactic, uh, to the interstellar and intergalactic uh, regions, you may have similar structures there, and they cannot be observed. Uh, now, it is very unpleasant to introduce this, such a concept if you cannot observe it. But it is still more unpleasant, at least to me, to postulate that at the outer edge of the uh, reach of the spacecraft, space changes its properties. 
And this has far-reaching consequences for astrophysics in general, and not the least for cosmology. Now, if we try to apply all this to, uh, to see what changes it, uh, this makes for uh, astrophysics in general, uh, I think many people are mostly interested in uh, the uh, uh, application to the, uh, to the uh, cosmology, and I have tried to concentrate on it. I don't think there is time enough to develop, <coughs> present a new cosmology here. Uh, the application is, first of all, that space has a cellular structure, uh, and this means that the existence of antimatter is not ex excluded. There are a number of very nice arguments for against the, uh, the existence of antimatter in the universe, but these are all uh, based on a concept which we know now is not valid. So we cannot exclude the existence of antimatter, and the universe may very well be symmetric with regard to ordinary matter and antimatter. Then comes uh, an, an analysis of the redshift. The redshift in, uh, demonstrates without any question. It must be a Doppler shift. I think it is impossible to avoid that. The, uh, the uh, redshift uh, demonstrates that the universe, the or to be more correct, use the old term uh, metagalaxy. That means all the galaxies we can observe. It is uh, a synonym to what the Big Bang believers call the universe. If you plot the uh, redshift, that is the velocity of galaxies, and here is the psi, the distance to the galaxies, you get this famous Hubble diagram, and people conclude that this proves that there is a, 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 a linear relation between the expansion and the distance. This, uh, this and that the deviations from a, a straight line here is, are due to uh, observational errors. This may very well be so, but it is not necessary to make such a conclusion. If you take each individual point and extrapolate backwards in time, you see here that this is now, and from here you extrapolate backwards in time, and then this is the distance from the Earth or in the reference system, you see that these do not necessarily coincide in one point. They spread here over a large region, and uh, it does not exclude that everything could converge in one point, but it does not prove it. It, uh, is, uh, it uh, proves that the Meta Galaxy at present is expanding, and that it was once about 10 billion years ago, uh, one-tenth of the present size, that is one billion years ago, uh, one billion light years. But this is not proved at all. Furthermore, it um, has been discovered that space has a, has a hierarchical structure. The hierarchical model was introduced by uh, Charlier, long before the Big Bang, around in the beginning of this uh, century, and it said that stars are aggregated to galaxies, galaxies to what we now should call clusters of galaxies, and clusters of galaxies to superclusters, and superclusters to some larger units. And if, if this hierarchical structure follows some general law, then we can be, uh, we uh, can satisfy some conditions, the Olbert uh, objection uh, and uh, the Seliger objection to an infinite universe. This was, uh, no, uh, was uh, not <coughs> uh, 
uh, believed in until 1970, de Vaucouleur demonstrated, he's a very famous uh, observer, that this really is true. The universe has the <coughs> uh, galaxies, meta galaxies and so on, are arranged into a hierarchical uh, structure. And um, this is uh, how the Vaucouleur's diagram looks actually. It is plotted in different coordinates. This is the size of a structure, and this is the mass of it. Here you see that the stars are, uh, are here. They, uh, this limit, which is very important, that is the, the uh, Schwarzschild, uh, the Laplace Schwarzschild limit. It means actually that on the other side up here, we have black holes. Uh, you see here that stars go down and neutron stars may approach the Schwarzschild limit rather much. But if we go out to galaxies and clusters of galaxies and so on, they are very far from the Schwarzschild limit. This is actually uh, <coughs> uh, uh, given in escape velocity. It's actually two orders of magnitude in density here. So they are four or five uh, orders of magnitude from the Schwarzschild limit. It means that the general theory of relativity comes in here as a correction, uh, which is t uh, negligible, 10 to the minus 4 or 10 to the minus 5, as far out as we know. Then if we extrapolate to the Meta galaxy using the same formalism, it comes here for orders of magnitude in density from the Schwarzschild limit. So the hierarchical structure of space, which uh, uh, de Vaucouleur introduced 1970, that, is, uh, that was not believed until uh, in the end of the, uh, of the 70s, it was general <coughs> peoples and collaborators make a high, uh, highly sophisticated statistical analysis and did confirm this. So you can say that the hierarchical structure of space is now uh, an observationally confirmed uh, structure. And there is a large void regions here, region here, which uh, makes it very unlikely that space is, uh, uh, is, clo is closed, which it it should be if it is on the other side of the uh, Laplace, of the Laplace Schwarzschild limit. I think this is approaching its, <coughs> its end. Sand, this is the sand reckoner which, uh, the, which Archimedes has as title for one of his most famous uh, uh, books. And if I should conclude this, I think that we should not take the generally accepted Big Bang hypothesis as, uh, as confirmed by observations. Instead, I should like to quote once again what Professor Nagel said, and I think that space research has given us so much new information about it about what the space structures are like. And it is, as far as I can see, unavoidable that this will shake the concepts of, uh, 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 the basic concepts of astrophysics in a rather drastic way. So if I should conclude this by giving an advice to the 500 students here, it is that those of you are interested in astrophysics should not take the curriculum in the general theory of relativity, but instead a very good course in modern plasma physics. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>